everyone, I'm Josh Milton, and this is Shell Point Today for Monday, October 20th. Coming up on today's show, we're less than two weeks away from the Shell Point Holiday Bazaar at the Woodlands. Find out what's in store for this annual event, plus the latest from the Academy on the man who founded the Lion City, and Shell Point upgrades continue as we light your way across the island. But first, the six-part Academy series, Russia Under the Czars, continues today with Session 2, Ivan the Terrible and Peter the Great. Russia expert Seth Mendel dives into the vast history of this fascinating country. Session 2 begins today at 1.15 in the Social Center on the island. Sign-ups are required. Shell Point's week-long discussion on child sex trafficking continues this afternoon at 1 o'clock with Laura and Carl Ralston, two people that are deeply involved in protecting the children that are victimized. Their presentation, Global Child Sex Trafficking, Prevention versus Intervention, gets underway at 1 o'clock in the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands. Sign-ups are required. And Windows 8, Beginner's Tutorial, Level 1, takes place today in the Computer Teaching Center on the island from 1.15 until 3 o'clock. The cost is $16, and a flash drive and sign-ups are required. For more information or to sign up for any of the activities we've talked about, stop by the Island Service Desk in the Resident Activity Center on the island or call 454-2282 or call the Woodland Service Desk at 454-2054. Well, the holidays are creeping up on us here at Shell Point and we have the perfect place to shop for all your gift-giving needs. Melody Desolet is here with more on the Holiday Bazaar. Hi Shell Point, I'm Melody Desolet, joined today by co-chair of the Holiday Bazaar, Karen Hubbard from Lakewood. She's filling in for Barbara Hilton, and she has some great exciting news for us about the Holiday Bazaar coming up soon. Hi, Karen. Thank Hi, you for Ellie. joining me. Thank you. Now, Karen, would you tell our lovely residents when this Holiday Bazaar takes place? Yes. The Holiday Bazaar is Friday, October 31st and Saturday, November 1st from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. right here in the Woodlands at the Commons. And we are standing outside the Commons. Now, all this activity is going to be hustling and bustling right inside those doors. Karen, tell me how many participants we have. Well, we have over 50 participants this year covering both floors in the Commons, so we really have quite a show this year. Now, when we're talking about participants, we're talking about very talented residents oh, of yes. Shell Point, yes. right? Yes. We don't allow outside vendors. This is strictly our residents. Exactly. All of the items are handmade by Shell Point residents. The items will be distributed in all of the areas, so there will be jewelry in different rooms, there'll be woodworking in different rooms, pottery in different rooms, so you need to come and see it all to make sure you don't miss anything. Do you have any holiday items, seeing as how it is the holiday oh, yes, bazaar? Yes, yes, yes. We have um, pottery, ceramics that are a holiday theme. We'll have wreaths, we'll have decorated bags, uh, some children's things for holidays. If people want to make a day of it, of course, they're going to have some transportation from the parking lots. Right. We have golf carts circulating, right. so they have a nice easy ride over to the Commons. But once they get here and they're finished shopping, what can they do beyond shopping? Well, the restaurants at the Commons will both be open. The Promenade will be open on Saturday as well as Friday. And of course, the Palm Grill will be open. So a visitor could have anything from just a cup of coffee or a soft drink to a dessert, a sandwich, or a full meal. And all of the restaurants are wonderful. Well, Karen, this sounds so exciting. And I thank you so much for joining me about this exciting holiday bazaar that we have going on. Again, Shell Point, that is Friday and Saturday, October 31st and November 1st. It happens from 10 to 3 both days. Come on over here because we had record-breaking numbers last year. We had over 2,600 participants. So you want to come here early, get the good deals, get the great stuff. And as Karen mentioned, there is something for everyone, and we know that you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you, ladies. Well, back in the 18th century, the struggle for control of Southeast Asia was a fierce one. But one man, Stamford Raffles, 
was able to bring people together and found the lion city, Singapore. His story is the focus of tomorrow's academy class, Stanford Raffles, from clerk to founder of the Lion City and highlights of Malacca and Singapore. Hi, I'm Terry Colath, and I'm here today with my favorite history professor, Adrian Kier. And next in his lineup is Stanford Raffles, from clerk to founder of the Lion City, with some highlights of Malacca and Singapore. Thanks for joining me again, Adrian. It's always a pleasure, Terry. Glad to have you with us in our academy. And this one seems like one of your more interesting topics to me because I can't imagine how someone went from being a clerk in that time to actually founding the city of Singapore. How in the world did he do that? It's a great success story. Um, yes. But you have to put it in its context that uh, Britain at that time in the early 19th century was expanding out of India and Burma and looking for uh, trading opportunities for the East, eventually uh, Hong Kong, of course. Um, and it's looking for a halfway house. Um, and the halfway house turned out to be what we call Malaysia today, um, which the Dutch were very well established in. Um, but they set up um, a trade base in the north of the country and began to get interested in the great um, materials that uh, Malaya offered, natural materials, and that was tin oh. for lining boxes of tea and also rubber for various uh, industrial purposes. So Britain had an interest in Malaya and eventually through um, discussions, debates, and little wars with the Dutch managed to come up with a deal whereby Britain's interest in Indonesia would be handed to the Dutch and the Dutch interests in uh, Malaya, mainly Malacca, would be handed to the British. So they had a trade-off and um, Britain had a clear hand in Malaya. Um, but the Port uh, Portuguese and the Dutch center of Malacca were still um, not very friendly towards the British. So uh, the British asked uh, one of their employees in, at that time, Sumatra, to see if there were other places in uh, Malaya which could be developed into a British port. Mm -hmm. So Sir Samford Raffles um, was a simple guy, uh, born in England, joined the uh, civil service, uh, worked in India, then worked in uh, the Far East, and he eventually rose to a, a middle-ranking uh, government job, um, being the agent in parts of Western Sumatra. And he was called upon by the governor of Malaya to find a new place for the British to set up a port. And he negotiated with the Sultan of Johor, who mm. owned the southern part of the Malaysian Peninsula, to buy what was a swampy little set of islands off the coast, um, which they called uh, Singapura, which we call uh, Singapore, which we call the Lion City. In fact, it wasn't, there were no lions in that part of the world. There was a civet. So the word uh, Singa is, is wrongly ascribed to a lion. It's a civet. So it's a, the, the city of the civets. There's some smaller cats. And so he negotiated for um, perpetuity, um, bought effectively Singapore Island and the islands round about it. And from that, he had a great hand in actually setting up the city as he saw fit. So it was a colonial start from scratch, uh, open up the box, how should we design it, who should live where, yeah. Europeans there, Chinese there, Indians there, um, wide streets, colonial buildings, um, commercial centers, um, shopping centers, neighborhoods, and he set up a plan with his architect friend, which is the plan that was followed and led to the modern city of Singapore. Amazing. And as usual, in your inimitable way, you will fill in all the details. You won't want to miss this interesting story about one person, Stamford Raffles, and a very impressive part of the globe. That's tomorrow with Professor Adrian Kerr in the Grand Cypress Room, 10 o'clock. As usual, you can sign up right at the door. The staff and administration here at Shell Point are constantly striving to make your experience here better. And one of the ways they are doing that is by upgrading streetlights around the property. A long-term project that's underway now around Macoma and Teladora. These are the new LED lights that we're putting on the perimeter of the island, replacing the old uh, acorn style lights. They are 78 watts each. The old ones are about 150 watts, so we're using less than half the uh, voltage. We'll have more light coming out of them. The lights have about 100,000 hours of life to them. 
where the old ones had to be replaced the bulb every 2,000 hours. So from a maintenance point of view, it's just uh, much more efficient. We're not constantly out there fixing broken lights. Uh, we have 35 of them to do in this budget year, which should put us back past the mid-rise buildings. And next year we'll uh, do another 35 until we get them all around the island. They're more efficient because there's a down light on here. There's two LED bulbs up top and they'll spread the light on the roadway and on the walkway rather than just spread it out into the atmosphere. Um, it's not shining into residents' apartments then. It's, it's shining down on the ground. To well, total on the island is about 120 if we do all the parking lots and the perimeter. Um, like I said, we're doing 35 at this first phase on this uh, budget year. Next fiscal year, we'll do another 35 or 40, whatever we can afford, until we get them all around the island. We have to pour a new basin here and put new anchor bolts. So uh, it's an involved process where we have to dig up the old base, pour a new 24-inch one around the old base, pin it all together, pour the concrete, mount these 10 inch by 3 quarter inch anchor bolts which will uh, secure these poles and uh, we're hoping to do two to four of them a week you know working within our schedule we don't have anyone dedicated to this job just uh, as we can fit it into our schedule we'll handle them that way we, we raise the bases up so that when they're weed whacking around here they're not hitting the bottom of the poles and beating up the bases uh, like you see all around the island it just uh, makes a nicer look. And it also keeps the water out from the poles. I just think everybody would be uh, happier with them. It's basically the same lights that we have put in the pool and around the pavilion. So we're just gonna continue them around the island until we get everything replaced. Looks like some great improvements to Shell Point. Now, it's time to cover all of Monday's happenings, academy news, menus, and village church connections, right after this word from David Howenstein with a preview of his radio show on TV, Listening to the Words. This week on Listening to the Words, the program is about kids growing up. A boy enjoys the fun of reading under the covers. Another boy faces Frankenstein and his young fear falls. A girl finds her way out of the box to become a writer. Not being able to wait for Halloween, I find myself reading a story about strange sounds in a graveyard and another about two girls finding letters in a haunted house. Then I read my new poem about the fun of Halloween. David Howenstein inviting you to get warmed up for next week's holiday by tuning in any day this week to a 30-minute program starting at the top and the bottom of each hour on your Shell Point Channel 12. I'll be there to thank you for listening to the words. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley, and I'm here with Jill Aldrink, and we're going to tell you about the activities that we offer for you here today at Shell Point. We're going to start the activities this morning at 8 o'clock with men's match play, doubles tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. 8.45 is the time you'll find virtual bowling in the Resident Activity Center. At 9 o'clock, we have a trip going out to Ding Darling. We have our own Sally Rich having her uh, photo exhibit, The Courtship of Great Blue Herons. Uh, we're going to leave it from the island starting at 9 o'clock, 9.10 at the Woodlands, and 9.20 at Eagles Preserve. 9.15 is the time the billiards will be played at the Resident Activity Center. Also at 9.15, we have pottery with instruction available in the pottery studio. We're going to move to 10 o'clock for the men's match play, doubles tennis. Also at 10 o'clock, we have our Suzy Q boat going out to Woody's Waterfront Restaurant for lunch. At 10.30, the Disciple Men's Bible Study Group will be in the game room of the Woodlands. Table Tennis Clinic will be in the Tarpon Room at 10.45. And we round out the morning at 11.30 with a Health Connections class, health Specifics in Cardio Conditioning. That's in the Health Club, and that's currently full. Here's Jill for the afternoon activities. Well, Bev, there's a lot going on this afternoon. We're going to start with Mahjong in the Sable Room at 12 o'clock. 
And then at 1.15 we have several activities. You can play advanced table tennis in the tarpon room. Also at 1.15, Samba, the card game. They play that in the resident activity center. And the tone chimes will be practicing in the Osprey room. At 1.30, the model train room will be opening up and they're open all afternoon. At 1.45, Health Connections Balance and Mobility Training Level 1 will be meeting in the health club. That class is currently full. At 2 o'clock, the BDI Bead Club. Those ladies will be meeting in the Oak Room at the Woodlands. Also at 3 o'clock, we have Health Connections Pilates Stretch. They'll be in the health club on the island. At 3.15, the Shell Point Singers will be rehearsing in the choir room at the Village Church. Health Connections Aqua Agility and Conditioning will be meeting at the Aquatic Center at 3.30. And at 4 o'clock, the Suzy Q is going to head out for sightseeing and dinner at the Lighthouse Restaurant. 6 o'clock, we have Beginner Square Dancing in the Health Club. That class is currently full. And at 6.30, Duplicate Bridge is played in the game room at the Woodlands. We conclude our Monday at 7.30 with the Health Connections Square Dancing Instruction. They meet in the health club, and that class is also currently full. Thanks for joining us here today for the happenings, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Hi, I'm Terry Kolak with the Academy Information for Monday. At 9.15, creating and personalizing Gmail accounts continues in the Computer Teaching Center on the island. At 10.15, we have HDTV possibilities with the iPad and the Manatee Room on the island. And at 10.30, appreciating words in the Oak Room of the Woodlands, and they welcome everyone. At 1 o'clock, we have a program on global sex trafficking in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands. You can sign up right at the door. At 1.15, Windows 8 for Beginners will begin in the Computer Teaching Center on the island. Sign up is required. At 1.15, we continue the series on Russia under the Tsars in the Social Center on the island. I'd like to share with you a new class coming tomorrow. Stamford Raffles, from clerk to the founder of the Lion City with Professor Adrian Kerr. You can sign up right at the door. Menus for Monday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is roast beef with baked potatoes and mixed vegetables. The dinner special is all home cooking night for $11.95, and the soup of the day is vegetable beef. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is a meat lover's scramble with home fries for $7.25. The dinner special is grilled shrimp with a Caesar salad and garlic bread for $8.25, and the Palm Grill is closed on Mondays. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Greetings and welcome to Village Church Connections. You'll see us here with our shoe boxes, and I'm also here with Priscilla Waltz, who has been a leader in this ministry at the Village Church. Thank you for joining us, Priscilla. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about Operation Christmas Child. We have been getting boxes ready and assembled, and they're uh, now stacked up at the church, ready to pick up. But before we get into some of the detail about that, tell us a little bit about Samaritan's Purse and the whole Operation Christmas Child thought process. Well, Operation Christmas Child, um, the shoebox project, mm -hmm. started 21 years ago, and it has been growing as an organizational project ever since. And fortunately, we have been growing with it too here at Shell Point, and I'm thankful for that. Um, it's an outreach to children all over the world who just, many of them never receive a gift mm -hmm. for themselves or a gift. They hardly know what a gift is. And this is an opportunity to uh, tell them and show them that they have another gift, and that is God's love. And so we pack the boxes and send them, and before they're actually shipped out, a brochure is put in, in their language, The Greatest Journey, and it's an introduction to Jesus. Yeah. So that's the ministry of, of the Operation Christmas Child, under the sponsorship of Samaritan's Purse, yes. And churches all over 
the country um, participate in this mm -hmm. ministry, pack shoe boxes and send them right. off. Some of our folks may have never done this. Mm -hmm. So let's talk through the process just a little bit. I'm holding an empty box. Okay. And if they come to the village church, they can pick up an empty box. And inside that box, they'll find instructions that tell them how to pack the shoe box. Mm -hmm. Also label on here mm -hmm. so that they can label it for a boy or girl. There's a couple rubber bands in the box. And when they're all finished, they'll put those rubber bands around the right. box so that the box stays closed, obviously. Right. And so it's a fairly easy process. Mm -hmm. They just need to do that and then return it to the church. But they may not know what to put in it. Well, that's where this little pamphlet comes in. The, uh, the brochure that is in box mm -hmm. tells how to pack a shoe box. Okay. So it gives you ideas of things to put in, things, a few things that you shouldn't put in, and how to select for a boy or a girl, and the, the uh, strip that you put on the top of the box indicates also the age group, right. and that should be marked. Even if you don't know quite what size you want to put it or what age you want to put it, please mark something on it so that right. it helps the other people that are <laughs> passing them out. <laughs> and I believe you've got a packed shoe box here if you want to open it and just yes. show folks what that looks like. Quite a selection of things. School, school supplies are in the bottom of the box. Cuddly little toy, a t-shirt, some balloons for fun. Uh, some toiletries are really very, very welcome. Toothbrush, toothpaste, and combs, a plastic cup, some hard candies, but they must be wrapped, and they, they really best should be put in little plastic bags. So, that gives you some ideas, but that's just hardly touching the surface. <laughs> there are so many things that you can put in that little boys and girls all over the world would love to have. And it's really nice to do kind of a combination of practical things and fun things. Right. Because mm -hmm. um, that just gives them a little bit of, of what they don't have in those areas. Our goal this year is to pack 400 shoe boxes. Right. That was our goal last year, and we came really close, but we just didn't quite make it. So this year, we need to work together and see if we can surpass that goal. Yes, we would like to do that. And I also know you and I were talking about the fact that it is possible to track your shoebox. Yes. They have the uh, uh, ability to do that online now if mm -hmm. pe people want to track and find out where their shoebox goes. And we would love to hear those stories. Yes. So if somebody has been tracking their shoebox or perhaps mm -hmm. they get a letter back because they included an address mm -hmm. from a boy or girl somewhere in the world that says thank you, we would love to know that. We surely would. And the instructions for doing that are included in this little brochure. So people have that to refer to also. Okay, that's great. And when are our collection dates? All right, uh, we have two collection dates to remember. One is our own at Shell Point Village Church, and that will be the week of November 9 through 16. Mm -hmm. And then on the 18th, these boxes will go to the national collection place for this area, which happens to be Cape Coral. Okay. And so people will have through the 16th to get their boxes back to our church and have them go on the way. And interestingly, when these are taken to a... a um, what they call a national collection mm -hmm. center. They are all checked before they go out. And it's requested that $7 be sent with each box. Mm -hmm. Now, if a person is sending more than one box, they only need to send one check covering two boxes. Okay. And not worry about the fact that there's no dollar, seven dollars in the second box. And that helps them cover the shipping. Yes, right. And they really need it for that because they send them 
literally all over the world. Okay. So our boxes are stacked up. They're ready to be picked up and filled. And then we encourage folks to bring them back to the Village Church sometime between November 9th and 16th. Preferably not before that. Right. We just don't have a lot of storage room. So right. if they can bring them back that week, that's really helpful. Right. Yes. Great. Thank you, Priscilla, for being with us, for your passion for this ministry and all the work that you do, and for introducing this to our Shell Point community. Thank you for this opportunity. And thank you for joining us today. Please stop by Village Church and pick up your box as soon as possible, and then have fun shopping to fill it. There's a boy or girl somewhere in the world that will appreciate it this year. Have a wonderful day. Well, that about does it for today's show. Tune in tomorrow when we learn more about the day respite program at the Arbor, plus a therapy program at the Rehabilitation Center that helps manage conditions that affect your speech, and a collectibles roadshow travels here to Shell Point. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Monday, October 20th. I'm Josh Milton, and for all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.